Here are animals who are basically evil geniuses. Number 12. Male Cuttlefish These days, if you're single, meeting a potential partner is easier than ever before. There's Tinder, Bumble, OkCupid, and there's even Bumble BFF, where you can find people just to hang out. No more of the old-fashioned way of just meeting people through your friends or people who just happen to be around you. Essentially, be thankful you're not a male cuttlefish. Granted, you'd have pretty cool camouflaging skills if you were, but check out what some of the guys have to do in order to find a partner. Some male cuttlefish are too small to fight for a mate, so they have to have a sneaky plan if they want to get the ladies. In order to fool their fellow larger males, male cuttlefish were disguised half of his body to look like a female to the male cuttlefish, while he'll keep on displaying his male patterns to the female cuttlefish. The larger male, therefore, thinks he's in luck with two females. As long as the smaller male avoids being grabbed in the typical cuttlefish mating embrace, the smaller camouflage male cuttlefish is safe. Meanwhile, the actual female, who isn't too picky, mates with the smaller, sneaky male right in front of the large male. The egg she now lays will contain a mixture of sperm from both fathers, giving her eggs the best possible chance of success. How do you guys feel about this mating strategy? What would you guys do if you found out some lady you hit on weren't actually female? Let us know in the comment section and oh yeah, do us a big favor and hit that like button right here. Number 11, Pacific Striped Octopus. You know that old trick where kids reach around and tap someone on their far shoulder to try to make them look the other way? Well, in the ocean, the Pacific Striped Octopus employs that exact same strategy in order to catch food. Anytime they get hungry for shrimp, these octopus swim right up to them reach their tentacles around and tap the shrimp on the back. This pretty much freaks the shrimp out who think there's some threat right behind them. So they swim to get away right into the trap of the clever octopus. Not only is this very sneaky, it's also an unusual hunting method for an octopus. Whereas other octopus species tend to just snag their dinner with their long tentacles, the larger and perhaps less agile Pacific striped octopus prefers this sneaky approach. Wanna hear something else that's weird? Of course you do. When mating, the males keep their mates at tentacles reach to avoid being eaten. Welcome to the weird and wacky world of a Pacific striped octopus. Number 10, boxer crabs. Boxer crabs have teamed up with sea anemones to form one of nature's most interesting symbiotic relationships. Armed with stained tentacles that can wreak some serious havoc, the sea anemone provide a useful weapon to the boxer crabs. The crabs literally use the anemones as a weapon to fend off predators. While it may look like the crabs are just waving around colorful pom-poms, it's actually a very effective survival tactic. And for their efforts, the anemones get fed for free. The boxer crabs, grateful for the services provided by the anemones, help them collect food. So it's a classic case of if you let me use you as a deadly weapon, I'll help you use your tentacles to collect and eat food. Hey, wait a minute, this isn't evil at all. Maybe they're great friends. Number nine, bowerbirds. If you look up the definition of petty, maybe there should be a picture of a bowerbird. These guys meticulously make their own nests and will go out of their way to destroy the nests of other birds. That's petty to the max, don't you think? Bowerbirds primarily make their homes in Australia and Papua New Guinea in a range of different habitats, such as rainforests and shrublands. And despite their harmless bird next door type of look, these creatures are quite mischievous. As a means of courting female birds, the male birds build really elaborate nests. I mean, they'll decorate these things with any object they can get their beaks on. Flowers, grass, plastic debris, you name it. This apparently is a turn on for all the pretty birds and males with great nests often attract great mating prospects. Things get so competitive during mating season that the males will go out of their way to sabotage their rivals' nests in order to make theirs stand out. Do these guys ever have wingmen? I guess it's that weird combination of male testosterone and domestic taste that make the male bowerbird so attractive to the ladies. Number eight, cuckoos. The award for being one of nature's worst parents should probably go to the cuckoo. These deadbeat birds literally trick other birds into raising their young. They barge into other species birds' nests, leave their eggs and peace out. Cuckoos have various strategies for getting their eggs into a host nest. Different species of cuckoos use different strategies, which are based on host defensive strategies. 
Female cuckoos have secretive and fast laying behaviors, but in some cases, males have been shown to lure host adults away from their nest so that the female can lay her egg in the nest. However, some birds are able to distinguish cuckoo eggs from their own, leading to those eggs getting thrown out of the nest. It's also been shown that some female cuckoos will lay their egg in the nest of a host that has eggs that look similar to its own. Other species of cuckoo lay cryptic eggs, which are eggs that are dark in color when the host eggs are light. This is just a trick to hide the parasitic egg from the host, and it's seen in cuckoos that parasitize hosts with nests that their eggs blend in with. More often than not, the cuckoos emerge victorious from the responsibilities of child rearing and just go about their lives. Number seven, Margay. In 2005, scientists watched in amazement as a Margay cat in the Amazon jungle imitated the distress call of a baby pied tamarind monkey. This was literally just a ruse to lure the monkey parents into a trap. Once the concerned monkey parents came to investigate, the Margay pounced on the monkeys, although it was unsuccessful. The monkeys saw the cat pretty quickly and were able to get away. Today, it's the only known incident of these cats resorting to such measures. But that's not to say they haven't tried before or won't try again. Either way, using the sound of a baby monkey in order to pounce on the parents, not gonna lie, that's pretty devious. Number six, Indonesian temple macaques. Do you guys know how science is always saying that humans and primates are related? Well, at the very least, macaques share a few of our traits, such as that weird combination of greed and ingenuity. A group of macaques living near the Uluwatu Temple in Indonesia run a mafia-like organization where they actually steal items from tourists, only giving the items back when they're offered food. The amazing thing here isn't the fact that these monkeys can identify valuable items, such as purses, cameras, and even cash. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's pretty wild. But even more amazing is that this isn't a behavior that other macaques do elsewhere, meaning this is a learned behavior by a colony of monkeys and not something innate within their DNA. Staff members working near the temple often act as mediators, offering crackers to the monkeys in order for them to release the tourists' items. And while this bizarre and criminal-like behavior is isolated for now, hopefully other monkeys won't pick up on this behavior. Number five, the black heron. No one can control the weather, but the black heron comes pretty close. In fact, it kind of sounds like a comic book villain, the black heron. Anyways, it looms over the water, spreading its wings, blocking sunlight. This tricks fish into thinking it's night, so when they come to the surface to feed, they get eaten by the black heron. That's like if you showed up at a seafood restaurant to eat fish and a giant shark ate you instead. Yeah, pretty devious. Found mostly in Madagascar and parts of Eastern Africa, they lurk near shallow waters employing that devious method of hunting, also known as canopy fishing. Small fish, often thinking it's dinner time, swim to the surface where they become the dinner for a black heron. Number four, the assassin bug. If you learn anything from this video, just know that the assassin bug, or the kissing bug as they're sometimes known, will suck out the blood of their prey. Yeah, ugh. In 1839, Charles Darwin was one of the first people ever to write about these bugs in the Voyage of the Beagle. He was apparently bitten by one of these guys while exploring the western United States. He observed how the bugs were flat and thin, but once he took a bite of human flesh, they would become round and bloated within minutes. Much like vampires, the assassin bug will lay low during the day, but once the sun goes down, they're ready to look for prey. As if that's not freaky enough, it's even one of the main culprits of Chagas disease. In the early 1900s, Dr. Carlos Chaga figured out that these bugs were the cause of symptoms that include fevers, headaches, and swollen lymph nodes. However, some people bitten would experience symptoms up to 30 years after the initial bite. This disease is almost exclusive to South America and Mexico and currently affects around 6 million people. So let's think about that again for a minute. People could be infected with a parasitic disease decades after being bitten. Number three, the orchid mantis. Now you'd probably think that there's virtually nothing threatening about a pretty little flower. Well, the orchid mantis is banking on that misconception. Found in the rainforests of Southeast Asia in countries such as Malaysia and Thailand, these little insects are pretty good at camouflaging themselves. By disguising themselves as flowers, they not only elude predators, but they also attract flies to prey on for themselves. They climb up onto the flower and sway back and forth, 
This attracts flies who think that the flower is a good spot to pollinate. However, they've fallen into a trap where an orchid mantis is waiting to have their lunch. Weirdly enough, only the females can do this. The smaller male is smaller and cunning enough to hunt down their prey the old-fashioned way, because they aren't masters of disguise like their female counterparts. Number two, dolphins. It's long been common knowledge that dolphins are really smart animals. They are so smart, they've been recruited to work for the military. Like humans, they can teach each other things and they can learn and adapt new behaviors. One thing they love to do is they like to have fun. And one of their ways of having fun is to terrorize a pufferfish. The BBC documentary Spy in the Pod showed dolphins masterfully handling a toxic pufferfish. Dolphins have figured out how to extract pufferfish toxins just for fun. The fact that they handle the fish with a certain degree of expertise suggests to marine biologists that dolphins have been doing this for quite some time. What's usually a pretty effective defense mechanism for the pufferfish has become a source of entertainment for the dolphins. In large amounts, these toxins are fatal, but in small doses, it creates a more of a narcotic effect. Dolphins know this and exploit it by chewing on pufferfish and passing them around to each other. Apparently, dolphins basically just float around staring at their own reflection after they've got some petrodoc toxin. What do you think? Is the dolphin truly an evil genius? Let us know how you feel in the comments. Number one, drongos. For most of us, food is relatively easy to come by, but of course, out in the wild, getting food often requires trickery or hunting prowess. The drongos prefer trickery. Found mostly in Africa, the drongo has mastered the art of tricking other birds into abandoning their food so that they themselves can eat it. Generally speaking, these birds eat food the old-fashioned way, you know, by trapping insects and getting up early to get worms, but sometimes food is scarce. When that happens, they start getting a little desperate. Taking up the role as desert watchdogs, or in this case, watch birds, they'll sound the alarm that a predator is lurking nearby. Except, they're liars. There usually isn't a predator and the drongos just want the other birds to get scared off. And here's where it gets even more impressive. Sometimes the other birds are having none of that. So the drongos have figured out how to expertly mimic the call of a meerkat, which other birds either believe or aren't about to wait around to see if the drongo is just being crying wolf again. So once the coast is clear, the drongo swoops in and takes the food. Survival of the fittest, right? Here's what's next. There was a post that went viral about a deep sea fisherman sharing some photos of some of the weird creatures that end up in his nets. This laughing octopus was one of them, but the post did not include any descriptions or details, only the photos. Do any of you know what this thing is? Have you ever seen one?